Eastern Utah in the United States is home to the national park known as Arches. For miles, six kilometers, north of Moab, Utah, the park is situated next to the Colorado River. The park contains more than 2,000 naturally occurring sandstone arches, including the well-known Delicate Arch, as well as a number of unusual geological features and formations. The park has the highest concentration of natural arches found anywhere in the world. The Colorado Plateau's high desert region of 310.31 square kilometers makes up the park. Elephant Butte has the park's greatest elevation at 5,653 feet, 1,723 meters, and the visitor center has the lowest elevation at 4,085 feet, 1,245 meters. The park experiences fewer than 10 inches, 250 millimeters, of rain annually on average. On April 12, 1929, the region was declared as a national monument. On November 12, 1971, it was changed to national park status and is now managed by the National Park Service. In 2018, more than 1.6 million people visited the park. The fundamental reason for the construction of the arches, spires, balancing rocks, sandstone fins, and eroded monoliths in the area is that the national park is located atop an underground evaporite layer or salt bed. This salt bed, which is thousands of feet thick in some spots, was laid down in the Colorado Plateau's Paradox Basin some 300 million years ago, Maya, when a sea flooded the area before gradually evaporating. The salt bed was covered with debris eroded from the Uncompagri uplift to the northeast over millions of years. Desert conditions ruled the area throughout the early Jurassic, about 200 Maya, when the enormous Navajo sandstone was deposited. On top of the Navajo, the Entrada sandstone, about 140 Maya, a different sequence of stream and wind deposited sediments, was laid down. Younger sediments that were deposited at a height of over 5,000 feet, 1,500 meters, have mostly been eroded. The Cretaceous Mancos Shale has been exposed in the region as one of the cover's remnants. The Entrada Formation is where the majority of the local arches were formed. The salt bed beneath this cover liquefied under the weight of the cover, pushing up layers of rock to form salt domes. More rare salt anticlines, or linear zones of uplift, were created by the local evaporites. There was faulting, and large chunks of rock fell into the spaces between the domes. Sometimes they seemed to be on edge. The Moab Fault, which is the result of one such 2,500-foot or 760-meter movement, may be viewed from the visitor center. Erosion stripped the younger rock layers from the surface as this underlying movement of salt changed the landscape. The salmon-colored Entrada sandstone, from which the majority of the arches are formed, and the buff-colored Navajo sandstone are the main formations that can currently be seen in the park, with the exception of a few isolated relics. Throughout the majority of the park, these can be seen in layer cake pattern. Water slowly crept through the folds, joints, and surface fissures of these layers over time. As ice built up in the crevices, it grew, exerted pressure on the surrounding rock, and fragmented it. Later, winds removed the loose debris. The park's terrain may seem rough and hardy, yet it is actually very delicate. The delicate high desert environment is threatened by the more than 1 million visitors each year. The crust of the soil, which is made up of cyanobacteria, algae, fungi, and lichens that flourish in the park's dusty areas, is where the issue is. Due to its semi-arid climate, irregular rainfall patterns, lack of deep freezing, and absence of plant litter, which causes soils to be vulnerable to compressional pressures like foot traffic and recover slowly from them, Arches National Park is particularly vulnerable to visitor-caused damage.
The Cytophobic Soil Crust Index, assessing water infiltration and T-tests, which contrast values from disturbed and undisturbed areas, are techniques for revealing effects on the soil. Arches Visitor Center has a cold semi-arid climate, according to the Koppen Climate Classification System. Located in Utah's Canyon Country, Arches National Park is a picturesque four-hour journey southeast of Salt Lake City, the state's capital. The famed outdoor destination of Moab, which is surrounded by some of the most untamed, breathtaking landscapes in the USA, is where most people begin their experience. The entrance of Arches National Park, which has the world's greatest concentration of sandstone arches, is only five miles north of Moab. However, this area contains more than simply canyons, slick rock, and arches. It also contains a geological story that has been developing for millions of years. If you go back through the park's early chapters, you'll find a country that has been buried underwater, split open by ice, and polished by the wind. Follow the footprints of America's first peoples, who developed a unique bond with these imposing monoliths and arches as you return to more recent pages. Today, tourists may easily see all of the park's highlights in as little as two hours thanks to the 17-mile Arches Scenic Drive. But you must slow down and leave your automobile if you want to appreciate Arches' splendor and offerings in their fullness. You can't see the desert if you can't smell it, Edward Abbey, a pioneering park ranger and wilderness author, famously pleaded. In Arches, the trails are simple to navigate. But keep in mind that the stone cairns you'll see along the slick rock parts are meant to guide you, don't start making more. It takes only five minutes to enter the park, where you may park at the Park Avenue trailhead and stroll among the shadows of soaring canyon walls that resemble the earliest skyscrapers in New York City. After walking around the park for another 15 minutes, stop to take in the wonder of balanced rock before turning into the windows section, where majestic arches frame this eternal landscape and our transitory presence. The park's major feature is about 10 minutes further up the main beautiful road, and it has over 2,000 sandstone arches. To observe this geological wonder march across the distant mesa like a pair of cowboy chaps, stop at Delicate Arch Viewpoint. But you'll need to hike if you want to get close to this Utah landmark. Wear good shoes, pack water, and allow two or three hours for the 1.5 mile hike to Delicate Arch because there are some difficult sections. It's a hike you'll never forget. It's unfortunate that so many tourists leave after Delicate Arch and return to Moab because the park rewards those who go a little bit further. Join a ranger tour to explore Fiery Furnace's maze. Cool slot canyons along the Sand Dune Arch Trail provide a haven from the heat. Next, take the route north to reach Devil's Garden, the park's dramatic finale. Although the park's picturesque road ends here, miles more of excitement are waiting at the Devil's Garden Trailhead. Explore the magnificent landscape arch, the longest arch span in North America, on an easy one-mile stroll. Then, if you have the stamina, continue into Devil's Garden, where people have been finding peace, safety, and spiritual nourishment among the spires, fins, and arches for ages. One of the world's great geological tales is Arches National Park, a region that has been carved by ice, polished by wind, and baked by the sun. And those who take the time to slow down and pay attention to this story will also be permanently shaped by this location. Because that is the benefit of well-spent time, and this is what the Arches have given us. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like, share and subscribe.